Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. I'm Damon Campbell with MusicSmyLife.com here at The Loft in Lansing, Michigan with a very special guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? My name is D1, the One Man Army from New Orleans, Louisiana. What's up, Michigan? Well, D1, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, do you know a guy named Silky Slim? Yes, I do know Silky Slim. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, that's a mentor of mine. You know, Silky Slim is from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. You know, I went to school out there. I went to college in Baton Rouge. And uh, Silky Slim, I met him in a barber shop. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, I met him in a barber shop. He was getting his hair cut. And he's like an old school gangster, man. Like a real life gangster. Not one of those studio gangsters. Real life gangster who changed his life around. And he really stands for something real and positive now. And he saw me as just a young college student wanting to be a rapper. And he was like, you know, what's going to make you different from every other rapper out here? Right. And, you know, he really always challenged me to have a message in my music, something that could motivate and inspire these young ghetto kids, you know. And um, when I graduated and I started teaching, you know, Silky Slim has always just been on my back to make sure that I stay focused on my mission. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, you mentioned meeting him at a barber shop, and you've become kind of recognized by your dreads, which you've been growing out for a few years now. Yeah. Uh, when you were in college, did you actually cut hair for people? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man, I used to cut... Uh, I used to cut hair in college, man, so... Just, like, kind of on the side? Or? Yeah, I mean, it, it used to... That was my source of getting gas money, oh, okay. you know what I mean? Had to get to and from uh, New Orleans, you know, because school was about an hour away from New Orleans, so when I had my little car, that would be my way I'd get gas money, man, is I'd cut hair for people, you know, $7, $10. Whatever you got to do. Five right? if I had to, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I, I became real good at cutting hair. Okay. And then, you know, after that, after graduating from LSU, um, uh, it's, it's been highly publicized that you became a middle school teacher. Yeah. Teaching eighth grade math and sixth grade life skills. Yep. And during that time, you sort of kept your raps under raps mm -hmm. up until uh, the point where... Your student Michael kind of put two and two together, <laughs> and then the jig was up. Uh, oh man, yeah, yeah. I got uh, I got exposed. I got called out on it, man. I I wanted to be taken seriously as a teacher. I didn't want them to be like, oh, this dude is a rapper trying to teach us. You know, he ain't for real. So I kept it a secret that I was a rapper. And then my student Michael, like you said, Michael uh, raised his hand one day, and he was just like, Mr. Augustine, uh, I heard that uh. I heard it. I saw you on a poster, Yeah, right? I saw you on a poster, and it was a guy that looked just like you named D1 or DI or something like that. And I was just in my head, I was like, oh, my gosh, what am I about to do, you know? Yeah. And the whole class was like, Mr. Augustine, you ain't no rapper. You probably suck. You probably suck. So I felt like they were challenging me, you know? So I, I, I had to stand up for myself, and I was like, all right, y'all, I am a rapper. And they was like, we don't believe you. They said, you probably whack. So I had to spit something for him, okay. and I spit a verse, and the whole class went crazy. It, like, incorporated the ABCs and stuff? Yeah, yeah, I, I tricked them. I was like, look, I did a rap about the ABCs, and they were like, oh, this dude is so <laughs> yeah. lame, man. Get him out of here. And I started spitting. It was like, you know, each letter stood for a part of a phrase. Like, you know, the boy ABC, I'm all about cash, and I'm always DEF, driving extra fast. Crazy chicks used to dish you, now they talking about they miss you. They GHI, them girls have issues. Fake friends don't like me, they only like my fame. They JKL, them jokers kind of lame. We changing the game, dudes rap, but they disappoint. Cause MNOP, many not on point. Uh uh, QR, uh, ST. Uh, I'm quiet, ready, and set to take over the industry. People don't know about me. An unknown veteran call me a UV, and we WXYZ. So whack rappers go home. We extremely young and in the zone. Look, I'm the best, man. I ain't scared to yell it out. But they couldn't understand, so I had to spell it out. <laughs> yeah, right. And I just looked at him like, what? What? <laughs> And then it's like, oh, this dude is cold. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, now, I've seen you do, been doing a little bit of bowling on this <laughs> tour in the off time. Uh, did your grandpa also get you kind of involved with, like, a bowling league when you were younger? Yeah, man. Yo, shout out to my grandpa, man. I love my grandpa to death, man. That's my hero. I love you so much, Papa. And, uh, you know, he, he got me bowling from the age of five in New Orleans. Oh, wow. Rainbow Lanes. Yep, Rainbow Lanes. It was in New Orleans East. 
And every Saturday morning when other kids were watching cartoons and Ren and Stimpy and all that stuff, I was bowling, seriously bowling in the league, you know, competitive bowling from age five all the way till I went off to college. Wow. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, speaking of competition, what can you tell us about the time that you played chess against Jim Brown? Oh, man. <laughs> this dude know everything about me, man. Yeah. Um, <laughs> dude, uh, what you laughing at? Do you hear this? This dude know my whole life story. Who, who, who is that? That's Katie. Yeah, we actually went to the last night. Yeah, Katie. Oh, no, you're good. Katie's on tour with us. This man knows everything about me. It's kind of uh, intimidating right now. Oh, <laughs> I don't, no, it's I don't know what he's going to say next. Nah, it's cool. <laughs> it's dope. Oh, um, it's dope. Uh, Jim Brown, chess. We got a mutual friend. I have a friend who works for one of Jim Brown's organizations called Amera I Can. Okay. It inspires young teenagers in L.A. And, um, you know, to, like, leave gangs alone. So one day he was like, man, I got to go stop by a friend. You want to roll with me? And I was like, oh, uh, I guess who? He was like, uh, Jim Brown. Oh, wow. And I was like, are you serious? <laughs> yeah. Jim Brown? And he said, yeah. So I was like, hell yeah. So uh, let me check my schedule. No, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> um, so we went by Jim Brown's crib. Beautiful house out in L.A., man, overlooking the whole city. Big house on the hills. And uh, it was an honor to meet Jim Brown. Oh, speaking, of speaking of my grandpa, it's my grandpa's favorite uh, running back ever. Favorite Having to sign a jersey for yeah, him. Yeah, right? exactly. So I got, I was able to get him an autographed Jim Brown jersey. You That's know? awesome. And uh, when I met Jim, uh, I saw he was playing chess against one of his friends, like an older guy. And you know, I play a little chess myself. So I was like, when is the next time I'm gonna get to play chess against Jim Brown? You exactly. Know? So I went ahead and, and and officially challenged him to a game of chess, and we played. Did you win or did he win? <sighs> Next question. Okay. Uh, <laughs> um, well, I know that you uh, have kind of a history of diabetes in your family, which I'm sorry to hear. <coughs> did that kind of play a role in you having to have stomach surgery in high school? Um, nah, actually it didn't. Oh, really? um, nah, my grandma suffers from diabetes um, pretty bad. And uh, me having stomach surgery in high school, to this day, it's a mystery to the doctors. Really? It, it's really a mystery why I got that type of condition. It was called achalasia. That's the name of the condition. And it was something where it was a combination of my stomach and my esophagus, like a uh, problem with the muscle contracting just sporadically. Sometimes when I would eat, the muscle wouldn't contract and let the food down. The muscle would stay closed and the food couldn't go down. Crazy. And other times I would eat and the muscle would contract, but it wouldn't close. So the food would go into my stomach but it would come right back up because the muscle wouldn't oh close. And they didn't know what happened. You know, they didn't know if I... I went to Africa a few years um, prior to suffering from this. They thought I might have literally got caught something when I went to Africa. Oh. They didn't know what happened, man. So I just remember being in high school, and I had to have this big surgery. They cut my stomach open, like five slits inside my stomach, and they went in and operated on me my senior year. Jeez. That caused me some... Um, College scholarships, man. I had a few basketball scholarships to some small schools. And when they saw that I was having all these health problems and had to have this big surgery after the season senior year, a lot of schools got scared. And they were like, well, you could come walk on, but right. we can't afford to possibly waste a scholarship on you. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, man. It's cool, man. If that wouldn't have happened, I wouldn't have went to LSU. If I wouldn't have went to LSU, I wouldn't have started rapping. Yeah, so maybe a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Um, did your did your grandparents have kind of all the best snacks in their fridge growing up? Yes, sir. They always did, man. You know, shout out. Ironically, to, I guess. Yeah, shout out to my parents and my grandparents. They both raised me real well, man. I love my mother, my father, my grandma, and my grandpa. But I gotta give the upper hand to my grandparents when it comes to the snacks, man. Like whenever I'll be by them, you open the fridge. It was always a mystery of, like, <laughs> what are we going to have in here? Because it's going to be a lot of good stuff. With my parents, you would open the fridge, and it was a mystery. Are we going to have something in here? Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, are we just going to have a few uh, slices of cheese and some mayonnaise yeah. and some butter or what? But with my grandparents, man, refrigerator, freezer, going to have some bluebell ice cream all over. You know, the cabinet, always going to have, like, uh, I like the, you know, the, the cheese that's in the can that, that you shake up and put the cheese on crackers. Always going to have that. Have Lil' Debbie snack cakes, you know what I'm saying? 
My grandma probably making frozen cups. We call them hucklebucks in New Orleans. Okay. Yeah, man. So, ex uh, currency, currency lived across the yeah, street yeah, from my grandma. Yeah, I was actually gonna get to that. So he he know about my grandma hucklebucks. You know what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah I guess. Man. I guess that's what uh, grand grandparents are for, right? Spoil the grandchildren. Yes. yes. Did you and did you and currency ever have any interactions or? Yeah, man. Yeah, he lived right across the street. So you know he's a little older than me. Yeah. So I was always the younger guy who kind of looked up to him, man. And, and I remember he had a basketball goal, and he was pretty good at basketball, you know. And I always wanted to play with them when they would play ball in the street. But I was literally younger, like, you know, five, six years younger. Right. So I would just hope they'd pick me on, you know. <laughs> and that's what made me good in basketball, though, okay. at an early age, because I was playing with all the older guys, you know. Yeah. And he used to come. I had a crazy... Uh, G.I. Joe collection, you know? Really? That was like my favorite cartoon, and I had all the action figures. So he'd come over and come play with my G.I. Joes, you know? That's crazy. Mean? Literally, man, yeah. And it was just fun, man. Like, he had come to my, uh, his birthday and my grandfather's birthday is on the same day. No kidding. Same day. So, you know, they would have parties. I would go by his house, you know, celebrate with them. He had come across the street by my grandfather, you know? That's so, yeah, crazy. Yeah, yeah. Man. Um, well, speaking of encounters, is it true that you actually installed a TV in the headrest of uh, Lil Wayne's truck <laughs> when you worked for Circuit City? Yeah, yeah, man. Yes, it's definitely, definitely a true story. Um, I worked at Circuit City when I graduated um, high school. You know, I was trying to make some money to save up for going off to college. So uh, I worked in the warehouse. And whenever people would come through, I remember... That's before I even started rapping, you know, and right. I remember it was a big deal that day. Everybody was like, man, Lil Wayne is in the store. Lil Wayne is in the store. <laughs> and I was like, where are you serious? And next thing I know, we would get these uh, printouts, these order sheets that would print out inside the warehouse. And we got a printout and it had uh, Dwayne Carter on it, you know, wow. and, and it showed what he ordered. So I had to go and get it, you know, from the warehouse, go ride the little forklift up and get the TV and then go out. And I remember he was with Gutter. He was with uh, oh, Gutter really? Gutter at the time. Yep. Yeah. And um, Lil Wayne had a big body SUV, and I had to go because I had the TV, and I had to go do my job, man. You know, so I had to go <laughs> handle it. Yeah. And I and I, I wanted to talk to him and just kind of strike up conversation. Yeah. But I was shy, man. Right. I just did my job. I handled my business. I told him thank you, and I dipped out. Maybe you'll have that uh, have that chance uh, in the future here. Definitely. Um, speaking of. Uh, vehicle matters uh, and oil leak in your 97 Oldsmobile Achieva <laughs> actually led to your first of many encounters with Manny Fresh, right? Ah, uh, <laughs> yeah, bro. Dog, you, hey, Katie, this man is dope. This man know everything. Oh, he's asking me. He's asking me about my oil leak in my 1997 Oldsmobile Achiever. <laughs> my oh right now nah, he's asking everything. Um, yeah man. So that was my first car. You know, I yeah. bought it. I bought it when I first got to college. Uh, I saved up money. I bought bought a car, Oldsmobile Achiever, and it was a hoopty. You know, it, it had a lot of stuff wrong with it. Actually. One of my teachers, one of my professors at LSU actually crashed into it, you know. Oh, really? So it was even worse, yeah, because one of my teachers oh, hit it. But uh, I had an oil leak, so I went to AutoZone near my parents' crib. And um, it was crazy. I look inside aisle three, and I see Manny Fresh just standing there, man, with his son. He had a little small son. And uh, I was like, oh, my gosh, like... <laughs> what you know? What am I supposed to do? And once again, I was like, Do I go and speak to him or do I just play it cool? Yeah. So I called my friend. See, when I met Lil Wayne, I didn't have a cell phone at the time. Oh, you know, really? I was still in high school. This time, I was in college. I had a cell phone, so I called one Ready of my to boys. Change the numbers. I'm like, Hey, man, man, it fresh is in the store. And he was like, Dude, are you stupid? You better go talk to him. <laughs> like, hang up with me and talk to yeah. him right now. Why are you talking to me? <laughs> exactly. So that gave me the oomph to go talk to him. And I walked up to him. I gave him a mixtape. You know, and I told him who I was and everything. That's the first encounter I ever had with Manny Fresh. And it didn't lead to anything right away, anything. But four or five years later, when we finally started working together, he remembered me from AutoZone. Right. Yep. Maybe it was uh, maybe it was even good karma because didn't you actually hold the door open at Walmart once for BG and Turk? <laughs> <laughs> ah, this 
the best interview ever. <laughs> Thank yes, you. Yes, 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 dude. I uh, <laughs> I held the I held the door open for BG and Turk in uh in Walmart. You know what I mean? In Walmart. That was when I was a little younger. And um, that was my first time meeting any of the hot boys. And I looked up to the hot boys. You know, I wanted to be like them. So when I saw BG and Turk, once again, I was like, what do I tell them? Like, what do I say? So I was like, I don't know what to say, but I know I know they could benefit from me holding this door open from yeah. so, so I held the door open because they bought a dollhouse, you know, a big dollhouse. So I know they needed some help. So I held it open. And BG just looked at me and said, Thank you, little one. You That's know, awesome. I remember that, and I was just so hyped, man. Yeah. My daddy didn't know what was going on, because I was in the store with him. Uh -huh. And when I saw BG and Turk, I just left my daddy and just <laughs> it instantly went and held the door open. And I'm sure he was kind of weirded out by that, but right. yeah. Um, <laughs> just recently, you made your acting debut in an episode of the HBO series Treme. Yes. Congratulations. Thank you, man. Um, which I don't know if you guys are familiar with it at all, but uh, I know like the scene is like two minutes long. It's on YouTube. Um, it's pretty action-packed, man. How, how did it come together? Yeah, um, I'm starting to do some, some acting, you know, just getting off into that, man. I had some people approach me. They thought I would be a good actor. Oh, wow. Because they said I'm real animated on stage. So I was like, oh, why not? I try it. And my best friend, uh, my man Carl LeBlanc, he actually got murdered a few years ago. Sorry to hear um, that. Yeah. He, um, he was an actor, and he was in a bunch of movies when we were little kids, like Candyman. Huh. Uh, yeah, he was in a bunch of commercials on television. And I secretly always looked up to him for that and wanted to be like him. Oh, really? He was making real money when we were young, you know, yeah. real money. He got to miss school. He was in the movie Crazy in Alabama. Um, I remember this stuff. So when I got approached with the opportunity to act, I was like, you know what, that'd be great, man. And it kind of made me think about my boy and kind of, you know, hold him down, you know, and kind of keep, keep his legacy going. Right. So I did it. Um, I did it. And I'm also in a new Pepsi, Pepsi commercial with a... Uh, with Pepsi a, commercial? Yeah, a Pepsi commercial with Drew Brees and the group uh, One Direction. No, you're in one, really? Yeah, yeah. If you look look, look at Drew, Drew Brees in the commercial yeah. and look over his left shoulder, and you're going to see me standing right Seriously? behind him. Yeah. It's been everywhere. It's been on uh, X Factor and everything. Yeah, That's crazy. man. So it's cool. Well, uh, acting aside, uh, at this point in your career, do you consider music your life? Um, I never consider music my whole life. You know, okay. um, it's the primary focus of 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 what my energy is going towards right now though definitely um i consider you know i, I consider myself to be well-rounded like i care about my spiritual you know relationship with god i care about my relationship with my family i care about giving back to the community but right now music is giving me the platform to be able to be influential yeah you know so since music is giving me that platform i put a lot of time into my music right. you know? Yo, and 2013 is looking good right now, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's exactly. Looking good. Exactly. Well, uh, best wishes with everything coming your way, man. My man. I appreciate uh, you taking the time out to yes, chat sir. with us. Um, is there anything else you want to say to the people out there watching? Yeah, um, usually I got a lot of stuff to say, but this man obviously knows everything about me, you know what I'm saying? So it ain't really too much to say right now. Just keep supporting his movement because I really rock with this. This is a dope interview, man. It keeps supporting me, D1. You already know what it is. Make sure you go get the Focus Tape, which is what I'm pushing right now. Hosted by Manny Fresh, got Most Def, Killer Mike, Murs. Juvenile, everybody on that thing, man. And it's on live mixtapes and it's also on iTunes. So I let you boy. There you have it. Once again, I'm Damon Campbell and this is D1. Thanks for watching. Yeah.